Hey everyone, let's go and take a look at the sum of two cubes. So we have this a cubed plus b cubed, and a and b can represent different things. They can represent strictly variables. Sometimes they represent just numbers, sometimes numbers and variables. Uh, so it's important to keep that in mind as we work this through. Usually you are working with variables if you're looking at factoring it out this way. All right. So we're going to find out why a cubed plus b cubed equals the quantity a plus b times quantity a squared minus a b plus b squared. So the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that we have a cubed and b cubed and they're being added together so we can put the plus there but uh, in addition to that uh, we're gonna have to add some other things to factor out in order to accomplish this factorization right here. So, uh, for example, if I added zero here, and then I added another zero, I notice that it hasn't changed anything, right? But if I change the zeros, so that we have two terms that will, uh, when combined, they'll give us a zero pair like these two do, I notice again, nothing has changed uh, we still have added zero twice to the two terms a cubed plus b cubed, right? And since that's the case, uh, since nothing has changed, now we're just going to rearrange everything in order to make this come out the way that we want it to. So we still have that a cubed plus b cubed. Now if we look at what we're trying to get, right, we want to get an a plus b and then we're going to have three terms as well, right? a squared plus ab plus b squared. So if I can arrange this so that we have some type of, uh, the first term is subtracted from the second term, and then it should be added to a third term here. So let's start first with this uh, minus a squared b. And I'm just going to kind of cross these out as we use them, right? I've used a cubed and b cubed. And then I've also used a squared b. Uh, but now I'm going to use also plus a b squared. And then I'll slash through that just to show that I've used it. And then I can see that I've just got these final two terms that I need to use. Now, again, the reason I've set it up this way is because I know I'm going to have to factor out either an A or a B from either of the two parts that we're going to be looking at. This is our first part, right? And we can see we can factor out an A from each of these terms, and we would end up with our second factor here, A squared minus AB plus B squared. Now, if I can arrange this next part the same way, then I should be able to factor it out in that this second part here, I should be able to factor out a b, right? So how will I set this up? Just looking at these two terms uh, in this trinomial, the first term is positive, second is negative, third is positive, right? And that's a plus b. So I know that I should have a plus here and then a minus here, right? Because I've kind of split this up right here. Okay. So some of you recognize this. This is kind of like uh, factoring by grouping, right? Except for uh, we're not dealing with squares here, but cubes. So uh, since I'm adding, right, uh, from the two terms that I have remaining here, I have one that's being added to, so I'll, I'm just going to add that a squared b, then I'll subtract that a b squared. And now that I have those down, I'm going to cross those out just to confirm that I've used all six of these terms that I had in that previous expression. Now since I'm factoring by grouping, I'm still going to keep these split with this yellow line here. And to the left of the yellow line, I can see that I can factor out from each of the terms an A, right? Each of these terms has an A, but the maximum number of A's that we can take out of these three is one A because here in this third term, there's only one A. And you may notice something interesting about this parentheses right here, this factor. 
is it's going to end up being the same exact factor up here, right? So we're just going to look at these separately. We got a cubed. We took out one of the a's. So now it's an a squared. Well, what about this minus a squared b? Well, we took out one of the a's. So now there's only one a. We didn't do anything to the b. And then finally this last term, we took out the one a that was there. So we just have a b squared. Well, looking at the right side, it's going to end up being pretty much the same thing, right? Except for instead of factoring out an A, we are going to factor out a B. So there's the B, and it's a positive B. And then we'll look at each of the terms individually from left to right. So we still have that A squared here, but we took out this B. Then we have this minus A. We got rid of one of the B, so we only have one B left. And then we'll add, finally, now this isn't going to be b cubed anymore because we took one away. So, this is the new expression. And you can see I've, I've gotten rid of that yellow line just to indicate that it is one complete expression. Okay, uh, I only put the yellow line there so that we can see we're dealing with this in two different groups. Okay. Now what we have here is two different terms. We have a times this quantity and b times this quantity. Two terms, right? And from both of those terms, we can factor out this a squared minus ab plus b squared from both of them, right? So there's that in black. Uh, and what was left over from what we started with there, so from this term, we took out the a squared minus ab plus b squared and we're left with the a and from the second term we're left we took this out a squared minus ab plus b squared so we're just left with that plus b and that's what we were trying to get in the first place up here we've got the quantity a plus b and multiplied by a squared minus ab plus b squared now, be, it will be important to remember that we did first start out with this a cubed plus b cubed, which we, we separated here and here. And the reason we did that was just to give ourselves some space to work with in the middle, right? Because we added 0 twice. And from there, it's just a matter of manipulating this expression to get what we want. And that's the nice thing about mathematics, especially at this level, is that you should be pretty well skilled at manipulating equations to get what you want out of it, right? I mean, if they gave you something like slope-intercept form of a line and said solve for the y-intercept, that should be something that you're capable of doing. And if it's something you need help with, go ahead and search my other videos because uh, there should be some other stuff like that on this channel. All right, thanks for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe, and uh, good luck with your math.